Hallo Indie Game Fan, it's a smaller week of new releases, but the awesome thing about indie games is that there's always titles of interest, so let's begin with Theseus Protocol, a sci-fi roguelite deck builder that looks good, with a very anime look and might be of interest to fans of Slay the Spire. A decent looking 2.5D beating up title is Scrap Games, one where you play as robots and make your way through the levels beating up your enemies. I'm not quite sure why, but this seems to be rather popular and has momentum, so I thought I'll include it in this list, where the developers do talk about upgrading and unlocking characters in between levels, but I don't believe there's a great example of a beat'em up doing just that, so maybe this game will be the one to crack the code. This video is brought to you by Magna Play, the world's first indie subscription service, where it's basically Game Pass but for indie games only. If you ever wanted to sample a large variety of indie games but budget is a concern, I do think that this service is of interest to you, where the low monthly fee gives you access to all the current games in their catalogue with no limits. Critically, you're able to download local versions and it's not a streaming service, having a nice mix of both bigger indie hits as well as hidden gems, including the creepy first-person multiplayer title Hello Neighbor, Party Hard 2, where you need your noisy neighbours to keep the volume down permanently, as well as the always entertaining Kill It With Fire, where you can use a flamethrower in order to get rid of spiders in the house. This is from an ambitious young team of college students who are building their dream service, where the product is currently in beta and the first month is completely free but switches to 8 bucks a month after that, where they're aiming to have a catalogue of 50 games by February, so it is value for money and you can sign up via the link in the description below. Unofficially, definitely not Fried Chicken is basically Breaking Bad the game where you play from the perspective of Gus Fring, where you're running a number of legitimate looking businesses as a front for your drug empire. This has quite a curious dual management system in place, since you need to ensure that your restaurants are well run, taking into account the usual tycoon game factors such as layout, staff members, upgrading equipment and so on, but at the same time, this also applies to your grow up as you cultivate and process drugs. You do also have to be wary of the local authorities as well, or with a decent voxel look and is one for tycoon game fans. Have you ever looked into the night sky, dreaming of making Mars your home? Running a Martian colony is hard work. Every colony needs a base and enough room to expand. Foresight R&D's patented terraforming technology is expensive but efficient. I've had my eye on Farlanders for quite a while, since this is a gorgeous pixel art title where you're building and expanding your base on Mars in order to terraform it and to build a Martian colony. This has released demos before which has been well received, where it does remind me of titles like Dothromantic, but where you're placing buildings down, but it's a little bit more stressful and less relaxing, but looks to have a very compelling gameplay loop as you build up and upgrade to unlock new technologies along the way. Or when greenhouses are stacked together, it pays big. The more resources you gather, the greater the possibilities are for creating a comfortable colony. Remember, Mars is a different beast than Earth. You'll need to be sharp and adapt to ever-changing situations. Not enough building materials? Purchase them from other colonies. Electricity problems? Start investing in the right tech. The time has come to turn your dreams into reality. Join us as our newest colony terraforming manager and help make Mars a home for all. A special mention goes to Punch a Bunch, a physics-based boxing game where you face off against a bunch of opponents as you fight your way to the top. This is of note since it comes to us from developer Pontypens, who is also established on YouTube where you can get an in-depth look at this game on his channel, where physics-based brawlers can be fun and I hope this is great. Hello again! 
If you come across a funny bug or that's something cool in an indie game, submit your 5 to 10 seconds clip to indiehighlightreel at gmail.com where I'll be compiling and showcasing these with full credits to you. Bigger games begin with pocket card jockey Rhydon, one that does come to us from Game Freak, who is the developer of Pokemon, so it is definitely not indie, but it is the sequel to a 3DS title that people absolutely adore, being a solitaire game crossed with horse RPG, and will be out on Apple Arcade later this week. So you want to join me? <laughs> the world outside is beautiful. Tortuga A Pirate's Tale was announced at Gamescom last year and is already releasing, being a strategy management sim where you captain your own pirate ship and sail forth to loot and plunder. This comes to us from the developer of the Pot Royale series, so perhaps this will be good. We must not forget that our ship will need a few improvements here and there. A thicker hull, more powerful cannons, and of course, we cannot forget a figurehead worthy of the marvelous Caribbean Sea. And when it's least expected, we'll strike. is open to us. We are everywhere and nowhere. When you're ready, Sign up and be a part of my crew in Tortuga! The developer of Avernus did reach out to me, where having taken just one look at this grimdark action-adventure title, I do think that something might be here. You are delving into the ancient tomb of a dead god, battling against invaders who seek to desecrate your creator, where the action looks good in an almost Diablo kind of way, and some of you will be happy to find out that this is not a roguelite. Shoot'em up fans, this one's for you. Grease Counter GM is the sequel to Grease Counter from 2017, a hidden gem in the bullet hell space where the main mechanic in both is to play dangerously, getting as close as possible to enemy projectiles, letting them grease your ship in order to build your meter and looks like quite a classically designed arcade style title.
Commander Foster. It seems that the majority of your crew has passed away during the crash. The protocol 844 instructions are to continue the mission. We happen to have quite a number of management and base building sims this week, one of which is The Pioneer's Surviving Desolation, a survival simulation title where you're put in charge of your crew, having to work together to build your station, gather resources and stay alive on the innermost moon of Jupiter, looking like a pretty good one of these. Alert! An electromagnetic storm is heading towards the station. Get to the station without wasting any time. Hey, if you made it this far, subscribe to my weekly newsletter to keep on top of all things indie games, link in the description below. Let's kick off the top 5 with Surviving the Abyss, another survival city builder title but this time being set on Earth but underwater and in 1976. You are in charge of this deep sea research facility where you have to manage resources like oxygen and power where horrible things lurk in the deep darkness of the ocean and is intriguing because of that. I came across a stencil during one of those themed Nyx festivals and even watched Iron Pineapple play a demo of this and was impressed with what I saw, where this is essentially indie Bloodborne from a solo developer which is impressive work. They nailed the look and atmosphere, where it has quite a strange cloning mechanic where you can summon copies of yourself and it's just weird and interesting overall. and thrives. You creatures, both predator and prey, each one bearing new gifts and exploring unfamiliar lands. Technically, Rainworld Downpour is a DLC and is not a full title, but this adds 5 new unique playable slug cats and 10 new regions with thousands of new maps to a popular game from 2017 so it's a full-fledged expansion that borders on sequel territory. There's plenty of new content and people do really love Rain World, but if you're one of those, be sure to get this later this week. I do have a soft spot for Indonesian developer Mojikan and their publisher Togi Productions since it is not easy being an indie developer, let alone in Southeast Asia where game development is not common nor an easy career path, which is why I have to mention a space for the Unbound. This is a gorgeous pixel art narrative adventure game set in rural Indonesia in the late 90s, being pretty much a slice of life story but does have supernatural elements as well, but it just looks awesome and will be for adventure game fans. I do also have to give this title a special mention since it is from developer Maitan69, who was previously best known for Evans Remains from 2020, where the narrative puzzle adventure game Recall looks fascinating with multiple characters and intertwining stories, and you can watch this video for more awesome pixel art games. <laughs> 